VGS the VGS jump. Ah, what did you, did you say? Did you say VJS? Yes. Oh yes, VJS yeah. is the way to go, man. Like it was Alright guys, what's up YouTube? So I'm here actually in my car right now on my lunch break. I'm actually in my Discord channel. Check this out. So we're in my Discord and we're actually having a conversation. So the, you'll see the people who are in here right now, right here. And we're just in my channel and we're just having a conversation talking about code. And I, I told them, you know what, maybe we should go ahead and just record a conversation and just talk about code and um, you know answer any questions that people might have but again if you haven't joined my discord channel yet make sure to hit me up in the link in the description below join there create an account man that's awesome developers on here I love this community so yeah anyway we'll go ahead and I just wanted to record a conversation it's not like my other videos I usually make this is gonna be very laid back and I know you can hit it in the background but here we go thank you but I'm the CEO of that lemonade stand. Yeah, just put blockchain in it, and it's like, we're so- Put funny. blockchain in it? <laughs> Damn, I don't know. We're really gonna help the world. <laughs> Some lemon talk. Hey, does does anyone have any questions in regards to like, like anything in regards to like, um, yeah, I'm actually recording right now, but does anyone have any questions oh. about code or anything, um, or just the industry in general? Yeah, like, just some tips on how to get like a first job, you know, if you're not exactly in the industry. As always. Yeah, how to get all, how to get a job in the industry. That's yeah, I mean I guess that's pretty important, huh? <laughs> um shoot. Does anyone have any input on that? I mean I know I talk about that a lot, but does anyone who's in the industry or has had interviews at least have any um tips in regards to getting a job with the industry? I guess it depends on Who's talking by the way? Me. <laughs> Dude, it doesn't, it doesn't tell me who's talking on the phone app, okay? Yes, yeah, I was talking. Yeah, I'm, me, I'm Rib. I'm talking. Oh, Rib, okay. <laughs> um, it de I, I, I guess it depends on your country because over here in Germany, uh, we have so many developer jobs, but we only have that many developers. So, especially my country, it's pretty, uh, my, my company, it's a pretty big uh, internet company. It's an e commerce company. Yeah. We need every developer we can get. Like, we don't even care what education they have. We just take oh. all of them because Damn. we need so, so many developers. But wait, wait, wait. Where, where, where do you live, Rip? Where is that? Where is that? In Hamburg. In Hamburg? Okay, I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, let's go. Oh, so what were you saying, Rip? What were you saying? Uh, so I guess in the U.S. it's a kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of a different situation because I have a bunch of friends. That also did like their CS degrees and stuff, and they told me that it's extremely hard to get a job because the market's just that saturated. Oh, that's cool, dude. You're lucky, man. I mean, honestly, I would say this. Okay, I know a lot of people were saying this industry is saturated. Honestly, crazy. Just the last couple of days alone, I literally get and and Nate can talk about this too. Even Robert, I don't know where he is. He's probably actually having a job right now. He was working, but like we get DMs on LinkedIn like every single day. I wouldn't say that this industry, uh, this niche or whatever industry is very sa oversaturated, but I think the thing is this, is that a lot of people think they can code when they can't. I, I'm not sure if that makes sense. A lot of people, they learn HTML and CSS and they think they know enough already to get a job in the industry, but because of how competitive now even front-end development is, like it's not saturated. It just it just yeah. One thing you have to be able to build, I think, is just real legit skill. Um, and I think that's why even on my like Instagram and Twitter, I talked about how I'm planning on making a basic JavaScript found course to build a strong foundation. Because I mean, in some interviews I've had, people haven't even asked me about, gave me exams or a test on how I can code. You know, so yeah, it's definitely not saturated. I think more than anything, you have to have a portfolio. Um, yeah, so if this this video might go live either tomorrow or the next day and if it goes live tomorrow I'll cut this off but for you guys to know Yeah, so I mean it's not oversaturated and the thing is too is that I, a lot of people think I'm really good at code I'm not I just know how to research more than that. I know how to learn code, you know, and so that's what they're looking for Um, uh, It's insane and also one thing I'm realizing after speaking with some like uh, big companies they're, they're not looking for people who are the best developers, but they're looking for people who are passionate and people who just yeah. know how to code around things. Like I literally just started Vue.js, but just because I know a little bit of that free, that library, like so many opportunities are opening up. So it's insane, man. I mean, it's not it's not saturated. I think you just have to really put in the hard work. I guess that could be the, that, I mean, if you go into like uh, college and shit, you learn all the old technologies like PHP, you know, Java, yeah. uh, SQL and stuff. But if you start learning 
uh, coding by yourself. Of course, you don't have like all the mathematical stuff, but you don't really need that nowadays because you have libraries taking that for you, and they're also debugged. They work perfectly. So why would you write your own stuff? The yeah. only reason you would write that is because you want to uh, know how it works internally and how you would reproduce that. But what I want to say with that is, of course, I mean, I think I watched one of your videos where you said that. As long as you know the top frameworks and as long as you keep up with those mm -hmm. frameworks and libraries yeah you're probably always gonna get a job no and, and that's true that's very true and, and the thing is too is like um i always thought i wasn't good enough right the one thing he told me was chris we're actually really impressed because you know quite a bit of javascript for someone who's only been coding for two years and not even just that but because of how passionate you are and because of how much code you've learned within just two years you're still a possible candidate for that job and so like it's 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 kind of crazy and i think what people often do is that they tend to think that they can't do it. it's not possible but man it's 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 insane man i mean yeah, yeah. No, i mean that's well well done chris i mean i think in your, in your videos the passion really shows through can i just say something yeah yeah okay so yeah. i think that uh besides knowing how to code of course what's pretty important is that you're uh, a social human. <laughs> that's very true. That's, like, I, I, no, no, I, I, dude, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, I know that there are a lot of companies, like high tech companies, that do a lot of pair programming or even just. I don't know. You have to be a teacher. You have to. You, you have to understand what you're doing. You have to teach other people how it works. You have to document carefully. Yeah. Not everything, of course, but you have to document the important stuff. And that's mm -hmm. pretty important too. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree 110%. I mean, that's the basic parts of coding and programming. Um, no, I mean, I agree 100%. And, and I think one thing is that um, it, it's, what is that called? When you put, think you're, you're gonna get caught for being something you're not. What is that called? Um, programmer, dang it, I forgot what it's called. Um, like you, one thing I've noticed though with programmers is that they don't like to be corrected and they don't like to admit they don't know something. I mean aspiring developers, but not even just that, even junior developers in a company. And one thing we, I think one important that's skill, retarded. yeah, no, well that's the thing is that I think that's an important skill and a true sign of humility and someone willing to learn is when you're able to admit that you don't know it. That That's one thing that company is looking for too, because if you try to act like you don't know something and let's say they hire you, but you still don't know how to do something, you don't ask for help, you're only gonna delay what they're trying to ship out, you know, put live onto their server, etc. So yeah, but good question. Yeah, any other questions, guys? Anything else? This is good, man. Shoot, we should do this weekly. I like this. I don't get lonely on my lunch breaks no more. Nice. <laughs> same. So the, Did someone the say same? <laughs> you're just doing front end, right? Yeah, front end. I, I want to do back end. I want to do full stack Node.js, you know, or or work with the um, with um, PHP. But what I am noticing, at least in the U.S. or maybe in the West Coast or Silicon Valley, front end developers, you know, like Coding Phase just made a video about how back end developers get paid more than front end developers. That is true because they do have to work with all these difficult algorithms. But because mobile apps, uh, phones, websites, and etc. are evolving in regards to the front end aspect front end developers like in regards to pay we're get, going up there now with all these frameworks and the, how javascript is evolving it, um i mean front end developers are in demand and why because there's not that many good front end developers okay so i can i can i can tell you from uh, a perspective from someone uh, who's seen a lot of back end at a very big company that they're mostly who's talking like, right now rip Oh, rip? Okay. Let's say 85% back end people and 15% front end people. Mm -hmm. Just because, I mean, at, at big companies, you just don't see what's what's behind the website because there's so much going on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have in, in some companies BI, uh, because in the EU, there's a big problem with uh, data security, as some mm -hmm. of you probably know. Yeah. So what, so what you do, the data that the user doesn't enter into your website, you calculate that based on, I don't know, uh, the products they've looked at or whatever, mm -hmm. then you start writing complex algorithms on, uh, let's say, you want to find the partner of someone who lives in the city somewhere nearby, that other person who buys similar products, uh, and they also have the same age that you calculated, and other stuff, you know, there's yeah, just all this, yeah, absolutely math. endless <laughs> things you can do. 
yeah it's crazy actually i'm implementing such a thing like that in my uh, work where i am uh, oh uh, neat yeah but we're using elastic search to yeah. do a lot of that and oh. you know once you once you get out of the perspective that back end is just code that supports the front end the world gets so much bigger yeah pretty it's much. crazy how big it can get you yeah. can get you go to elastic search clusters you go to setting up servers from other locations you talk about how you uh, should scale up your application and then how performance should it should be what microservices you should build so yeah it, it gets massive and there is just no way that you can keep a track of it without documenting everything mm -hmm. and i'm not surprised that companies end up putting a lot of resources on the back end anyway it's just a too big of a job for like a small team even yeah no. and that's just and, and that's just so many more things that back end offers than front end i mean i'm not, i mean i'm not saying that front end is, is Who, just who's saying this i'm gonna ban him right now no i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just i just think that the data you have just offers you mm. endless things to do we're in front end yeah. i mean of course oh you can always like change what the user sees but in the end i feel like back ends just you just have more possibilities. No, I, I and I agree 100%. I mean, backend's huge. At my company, backend's more important than frontend. What I'm seeing from right now is that frontend developers are definitely catching up in regards to even pay as well. But I mean, backend, there's, there's so much. It's, I want to learn backend. If, I can't wait to go full stack because if, when I go full stack, I feel like, I feel like I'll be like Nate. I could do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm still trying to be humble. I'm not like this god expert coder or anything. I, I take every day as it as it comes, you know, and try to learn as much as I can. You know, I definitely trip up in places, <laughs> uh, and when I do, I don't shy away from asking for help. You know, it doesn't matter yeah. where I work or where I'm based or how old I am. It's, yeah. You know, I just need to know how. I had to do something to get my job done. And you know, that's what I, I like. That's, uh, that's what I like cool. about Nate a lot because Nate, like, on your first was that your first job, Nate, when you got let go, called it developer job, and like. Oh what? no no! It's, you're talking about a PHP one. Yeah, well, you got fired because you suck at PHP. Oh god no! <laughs> <laughs> but like, if I, you know, like, you know, like Nate is really humble because Nate is honestly a really good coder and um he's yes. really good and the fact that you're still you, and you're still very humble and that's one thing i really appreciate about, about nate a lot and that's why i made him an admin on this discord channel like really early on even though he'd like went mia for a couple months so um, <laughs> um he's very humble and so I, I definitely feel like i can learn a lot from um nate too ben no, but. I, actually when i came back i was really surprised to still be an admin on <laughs> yeah, i thought i was like what what i thought that I would have been like kicked or banned or replaced by someone else by now. No, nah, no, nah, uh, dude. I think I even asked to like give the the admin rights to someone else, but like I wasn't kicked out at all. Yeah, you asked me to so give it to someone gonna, else, <laughs> and um. Yeah, that, I, I realized now that I think I would have asked for an admin later on anyway, because it's just kind of like I'm having a lot of fun getting involved with other developers and uh, you know doing challenges and answering uh, questions in general and hearing your opinions as well yeah no I, I feel like our discord community is very different than other ones um i feel like it's just very friendly too and um yeah man but yeah i'm just thankful for you guys oh you know what um uh is there anything you guys want to say before i to the youtube yes, channel before I have one question. oh one question all right what's up well, like AI, AI, jobs. Yes. AI jobs AI, AI jobs are huge machine learning is huge honestly mach yeah. okay machine learning cheese man I mean, what do you think? it's huge. I mean, I think machine learning is where the money is at for sure. Uh, I, I don't know too much about it, but from speaking with like, for example, when I was speaking with um, the CEO of Treehouse, which is um, Ryan Carson, um, when the camera was off, we were actually talking about machine learning. And he said machine learning, is, well, JavaScript is huge right now, right? But machine learning is really where the money is at because that's where everything's going at. I mean, for example, Tesla, self-driving cars, um, Alexa, you just talk out loud and they're not responding back to you but they're listening to your conversation so they can react to what it is that you look for so they can make better suggestions to you in the future so machine learning is definitely the future and it's something i would be interested in learning too after i get better at what i'm i'm doing but um yeah man uh, i think python is huge for machine learning i'm not sure about any other languages i'm not too familiar with other languages in regards to that but yeah man that's the money there's definitely money there 
Um, and what's the cool is that uh, what's his name? Tesla. I love Tesla, man. I can't wait to get a Tesla car. But Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Yeah, he said when he was doing an interview, and I'm sure everyone's seen this. When the interviewer was asking Elon Musk, when people will come to apply at your company, do you care about a degree? And Elon Musk said, I do not care about degrees. I don't even look at that. He said, as long as the person is capable and they have the skill to do it and the passion to learn, I want that person. Um, and of course, you have to prove it though. How do you prove it? Through projects, through portfolios. So degrees aren't that important anymore, although they do help. I can't say they, they're not, like they do help a lot in learning things that you can't teach yourself. They, f they push you to do projects that you never would have imagined to do on your own too, which is amazing, which is very useful when you show that portfolio to a company. But yeah, um, that's my opinion on that. But um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna end the video right here. It's already getting 20 minutes, shoot. Um, but all right, okay, thank you. Yeah, no, um, but yeah, guys, if you haven't yet, make sure to join the Discord channel. Um, we got cool people. We got really um, interesting people like Jax. Um, don't ever talk to him, but you can talk here about him. And everyone else on here right now, these are the people in the uh, in the chat. But yeah, um, but alright guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. I'm gonna do more videos like this weekly. Uh, this is Krishan, it's Life with Developer, and I'm out. Peace.